thanks again, everyone, for joining. Uh, we'll go ahead and get everything kicked off here. I want to thank you for joining our energy storage market series this week. Today, we're going to be hearing from Silas, an application engineer over at Hanwha Q Cells, to talk a little bit about their uh, Q Home product. Um, before we dive in, I'll go ahead and um, give a little bit of background on Renvu and some of our products if you, if you haven't uh, joined in before. My name is Nick. I'm a sales engineer here at Renvu. Um, Renvu was founded in 2012, based out of Mountain View, California, although we have fulfillment centers located on the, the west and east coast, as well as in Texas. Um, our entire sales uh, team has an engineering background, which allows us to go in depth uh, on projects with our customers, whether it be smaller residential um, DIY projects or, or larger commercial as well. Um, we offer a, a number of additional services as well uh, uh, as the equipment. So one of the big ones is the Megawatt Club, um, which is a program that offers free shipping for a, a flat rate. Um, next to our engineering services and packages, we offer uh, several um, full permitting package options as well as engineering stamps for both residential and commercial projects. Um, we have a number of online uh, design and, and quote tools that you can uh, use to get a uh, full system quote uh, relatively quickly, um, as well as a number of different financing options, both for uh, net terms and um, residential or commercial financing for projects as well. Um, uh, next up, just a few of the products we carry. Um, KB racking, a uh, great ballasted racking option that we just added. Incredibly fast and easy system to install, and it's got a, a really great price point. So if you have a commercial rooftop um, uh, application, really great option. We just did a recent webinar with them as well that you can check out on our YouTube page. Um, Powerfield, uh, another great ballasted option, but this time uh, for ground mount. Um, so a little bit different than your traditional ground mount options, um, but uh, take a look, it's a really great option. Um, NLX, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about this later with uh, Bleeker, their carport solution that's listed there as well. But NLX, really great step two, 48 amp uh, EV charger. Um, uh, there's commercial options as well as residential options that can even go into to higher um, current. Um, and then last listed there, uh, Blicker, um, residential carport solution um, that we just started carrying not too long ago. And I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of the uh, presentation. Um, so from there, I'll go ahead and kick everything over to um, Silas. Um, and he can go ahead and take a look and, and uh, start presenting. Thanks. Thanks for that, Nick. Um, so hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today. I'm going to go over um, the Q-Home system that, that Hanwha is, is providing. Um, it's a relatively new product, but we're excited that it's here and excited to, to, to tell everyone about it. So the q on product is essentially a residential home energy storage solution. Um, at the core of it is the Q-Home inverter. And the Q-Home inverter controls battery charging, it controls battery discharging. Um, it powers the backup panel, and it can also be integrated directly with the solar. Um, and so the information here is a, is a pretty good summary of the different uh, kind of high level items of the Q home. And so, so starting at the top of the list with the product, there's scalable uh, storage capacity. And so you're not limited to just one particular battery size. But what we do is we have two different battery modules and any system can have up to three of those battery modules. So there's scalable storage capacity from 4.5 kilowatt hours up to 18.9 kilowatt hours. Um, and in a, net, in a subsequent slide, I'll go into that a little bit more. Um, the inverter comes in a few different sizes as well, um, anywhere from 6 to 8.6 kW. Um, in terms of backup power, so if, you're, if the grid shuts down, um, the maximum possible uh, backup power is going to be 7.5 kW. And that is actually dependent on the number of batteries that you have in the system. Um, and so, again, I'll, I'll go into that a little bit more deeply in, in, this, in the following slide. Now with this product, it actually can do both AC coupled and DC coupled uh, applications. And what that means is if you do a DC coupled application, um, there's no need for an external PV inverter. Um, the solar modules can be connected directly to the, to the Q home inverter 
as it has uh, multiple MPPT inputs. Um, now, if, for example, you're doing a job where maybe there's an existing PV inverter, or you want to use a, a different PV inverter, it's possible to do an AC coupled uh, solution as well. And, you know, it gives the product good flexibility. So again, depending on whether your application is, in, you know, new construction or retrofit, this can, this can work for both of those applications. Um, and people seem to really like this because, you know, like I said, if you have an existing PV system that's already wired, already connected, oftentimes folks won't want to rewire everything if they don't have to. Um, and with this product, they don't have to. Um, with QHome, another, I think, unique feature is the modular design of it. Um, there's not just one giant box with everything in it. Instead, we have a few uh, different components, for example, individual batteries. Um, the inverter unit is standalone from those. And so when you're going to install the system, not only is it easier to lift up and install and mount to carry around, um, you can also have more flexibility with where you install it. So if the homeowner wants it on the, you know, their outside wall or in their garage, um, you can put the system where you're able to um, and not just have to place this one large single unit. The product does come with a 10 year full system warranty supported by QCells. Um, and this is a really key point. Um, every part of this product is, is supported by QCells. Um, you know, so if you're installing this on your home, you don't have to chase down different vendors to get support. Um, in the case of an RMA, you don't have to chase down vendors to get questions answered. You just come directly to us. Um, and I'll go into that a little bit more in following slides as well. Our battery technology is uh, lithium ion, of course, um, with a 90% depth of discharge. Um, so we, you know, we work really hard to use the latest and greatest lithium ion technology for the system. Um, and then lastly, uh, there's, a, there's a remote control monitoring portal for the Q-Home um, that's web-based or there's a, you can use the mobile app. And similarly with the warranty, um, this portal, it, it connects to every part of the system. And so whether you're trying to, you know, get an understanding of your PV generation or your battery discharging, um, or you're trying to troubleshoot a potential issue, there's just one single portal that you go to for all that information. Um, and so again, when it comes to the case of needing support, it really helps move things along. So I'm gonna go to the next slide. All right, so here's just a, a quick example of what I was referring to earlier with the scalable energy storage. And so in this example, um, you have any, any Q-Home inverter, AC or DC coupled. Um, and like I mentioned, there are different size for the Q-Home inverters from six up to 8.6 kW. Now, let's say for example, you're doing a job and you're only putting one Q-Home battery into the system. Um, that means you're going to have a capacity of 4.5 or 6.3 kilowatt hours. And that's because the battery module comes in two different sizes, um, 4.5 or 6.3 kWh. And with that single battery, your maximum possible uh, backup AC generation will be 2.5 kilowatts. Um, and that's, again, it's dependent on the number of batteries you have in your system, not the, not the Q-Home inverter itself. Um, if you stack a second battery into the system, Depending on the battery module size that you selected, you can have nine or 12.6 kilowatt hours, and that goes up to three batteries, up to 13.5 or 18.9 kilowatt hours of storage capacity uh, maximum. And with that, your possible, your maximum possible backup energy capacity also goes up from two and a half to seven and a half kilowatts. Um, and so, like I mentioned before, there's flexibility and it, depending on the application and what exactly the homeowner wants, there's quite a bit of granularity with the solution you can offer. Um, and just one, one little kind of quick item I do want to just mention on this slide because it shows it pretty nicely, is you'll see on the first battery unit, it looks a little different than the other two. And that's because on the first battery unit, we, the BMS module is attached. Um, there's only one BMS module, even if you have three batteries. That one BMS module controls all three batteries. Um, and that ultimately reduces the wiring that's necessary and, and possible points of failure. Um, and so you'll see that as well in some, some subsequent slides. So now I just wanna go into a few examples um, of what an AC coupled uh, system can look like, what a DC coupled system could look like, 
and what happens when the grid goes off. So in this, in this kind of layout, this would be an AC coupled uh, application. And the main reason for that is, as you can see, there's a, a separate PV inverter and separate P uh, to the Q-home inverter. That separate PV inverter is plugged into the backup panel, as is the Q-home inverter. And so you have your main load panel, of course, and your house loads, and then your connection to the grid. So in this case, you know, there's no PV power going to the Q-home inverter directly, but instead it's going to that external PV inverter and it's providing power to the backup panel. And so one thing to note here is um, the maximum amount of PV uh, that you can put on the backup panel is limited by the nameplate capacity of your Q-home inverter. So for example, if you're using an 8.6 kW Q-home inverter, then you have a maximum of 8.6 uh, kW on, on the backup panel. And of course, there's the AC-DC ratio of 1.2 that you can use, um, ultimately up to, to the installer and the application. But there, that is one limitation. So now what happens if the grid goes out with an AC coupled solution? In this type of arrangement, your backup panel will still be supported, of course, by the Q-home and the battery. And it will also keep the PV inverter powered on whenever it's connected to the backup panel. Um, so even if you're doing AC coupled, even if you're having an external PV inverter, it's still possible to keep your PV generation happening during a blackout. Now, I would like to mention that in this application, the PV inverter is connected to the backup panel, but it can be connected to the main load panel in an AC coupled uh, application. And so if that were to happen um, and the grid goes off, you will lose your PV generation um, because the PV inverters need that grid signal in order to operate. So generally we like to suggest to people, you know, if you have the option, uh, put your external PV inverter on the back of load panel so that when the grid goes off, you still have your energy generation. And so pretty similarly, the DC coupled application. The only difference here is there's no external PV inverter. The solar modules are instead connected directly to the hybrid inverter unit, which again has um, uh, several MPPT input channels, up to four as a maximum. Um, everything else is the same for this layout. So again, if the grid goes out with this type of arrangement, your PV generation will stay on and your battery support will also stay on to support your backup load panel. Um, and there are some other benefits to the DC coupled um, arrangement, if you will, and I'll go into that in some following slides as well. So just a quick comment on rapid shutdown. Um, the Q-Home inverter is compatible with any PLC transmitter-based rapid shutdown device. And so that's AP Smart, it's Tygo, and it's NEP as well. Um, and the RSD uh, receiver is actually powered from the batteries, from the Q-Home. Um, and the reason is, like I mentioned, if you have an AC coupled application, your PV generation can stay powered on when the grid goes out. Um, if it's connected to the backup panel. And so in that type of scenario, you need your rapid shutdown devices to be operating still because the PV is going to be energized. And so that's why we power the rapid shutdown receiver from the Q-Home itself and from, from, the, from the batteries. Um, and for that same reason, there's an emergency stop switch with the system um, because if the grid goes off and your PV generation is still powered on, you want a way to disconnect that if you need to. And so we've included an optional emergency stop switch for those type of uh, scenarios. And so here's just a, a table of um, a little bit more detailed technical specifications of the system. Um, we've touched on most of these uh, so far, but like I mentioned, the inverter um, comes in four different sizes, six up to 8.6 kW. Um, your PV input has four possible channels at a maximum. So depending on the size of inverter you get, you're gonna have a different number of possible uh, inputs for your PV from 7.2 up to 10.3 to kW. And that's again with the AC-DC ratio of 1.2. Um, your backup load maximum capacity is maximum of 7.5 kilowatts if you have, if you have a three battery system. Um, and then, the weight of the inverter unit is 130 pounds. It's a NEMA 4X enclosure. Um, in terms of the batteries, like I mentioned earlier, they come in two different sizes, uh, 4.5 kilowatt hours and a 6.3 kilowatt hour battery module. And so 
you can have up to three of either of these batteries in any given system. Um, but it's important to note that you can't mix and match. So if you're going with a 4.5 kilowatt hour battery module and you want three batteries in your system, you have to use three 4.5 kWh units. And then there's, you can see the, the lithium ion battery chemistry that we're using is NMC. Um, so now kind of switching gears a little bit um, is to talk about the different work modes, the different ways that the q home inverter can be used. Um, this can change depending on uh, your region um, and depending on what the homeowner wants from the system. And so just kind of going down through this list, the first work mode that we have is called time of use or forced time of use. And this mode is, is especially beneficial in regions where the utility company um, has electricity rates that change depending on the time of day. And so what we can do is we can actually program into the system charge and discharge windows, two of them. And essentially when the electricity rate goes up, um, you'll be discharging from your battery and not the grid. Um, when the electricity rate is at its lower end, you can choose to charge your battery system up when it's a little bit cheaper. Um, and so we, we oftentimes find folks wanting that, again, where the utility company is offering uh, time of use rates. The next mode that we have, and again, is, is a very common one, is, is self-use. Um, it essentially, uh, the whole idea is to curtail, um, to avoid PV curtailing. So if the utility company doesn't give you much for putting PV energy back into the grid, it would be more valuable to you to put that into your battery so that you can use that at a later time. And that is what self-use is for. Basically minimizes the output to the grid. So that again, if you're not getting much from the utility company when you're back feeding, you can prioritize keeping your energy localized to your Q-home system, um, ultimately saving yourself some money. Um, the next mode that we have is resilience backup. Um, this one's kind of uh, the explanations in the name. Um, you know, in certain parts of the country, people want energy storage just so that they can have the confidence they'll have energy when the grid goes down. And so, you know, during normal operation, they don't really care what their battery is doing. All they care about is that it's fully charged when the grid goes off. And that's what backup mode is for. Um, backup mode will always prioritize keeping the battery fully charged. Again, so that if the grid goes out, um, your battery will have its maximum capacity to, to provide you with energy. Um, the next one is what we call feed-in priority. And so this mode is, is it's more specific where you know, utility companies have programs, incentive programs, where homeowners can essentially open up their battery to, to the utility company to use when the grid needs to be stabilized or when they can use some energy from that battery. Um, and again, there are some incentives there as well. So to work with that, we have to do special things with the inverter. And so we've come up with a specific work mode for that type of, uh, for that type of application. And so, you know, they can vary depending on what region you're in and what utility program you're working with. But, you know, we'll work with the homeowner, the installer, whoever, to make sure that the inverter is programmed as it needs to be to work with that program. Um, and the last mode is what we call demand management. Um, it's, it's essentially the same thing as the time of use, um, except for one difference. And that difference is you can set uh, a threshold of power to be imported from the grid before you start using your battery. And the reason behind that is, again, um, depending on where you are, utility companies will set that threshold of power to say, um, you know, if you exceed this amount of power in a given day, then your utility rate will change. And so, again, this is just another tool to take advantage of your energy storage uh, system and, and ultimately, uh, you know, save some money against those variable uh, electricity rates from the grid, from the utility companies, excuse me. And so switching gears a little bit, um, I mentioned earlier the monitoring portal and I talked about how valuable it is, right? Whether the homeowner is trying to get insight into what their energy is doing or whether we're trying to provide support for, you know, RMAs or troubleshooting or commissioning. Um, that's what the portal is for. And so this is kind of just like the first screen that you'll see when you get into the portal. It's an overview of, 
you know, if you're an installer, for example, you can see all the different sites that you have up um, and total yields. If you drill down further, you can look at site level uh, displays that again, show you total yields, um, you know, what your PV power and your battery power is doing and also the time of day on site. Um, and drilling down one step further, you can look at this overview here. Um, we call this the real-time display. Um, and so in this example, it's a DC coupled system. And what you're able to see is what's happening on each component of the system, if you will. Um, you're able to have clarity on your PV generation, your battery voltage, current power, and state of charge. Um, you can see what the inverter is putting out. Um, you're able to see your home loads and also the power coming from the grid. And so this is valuable for two reasons. Again, number one, if a homeowner wants to just have any kind of idea, have any level of insight into where their energy is going and what's happening with their system, this is a very visual way to see that. Um, this isn't you know, actively running so you can't see it, but if you look on the portal, these arrows are moving. And so it, it's a very visual way to see where the power is going. Um, and then beyond that, you know, if we're, if there's an issue with the system and we have to help troubleshoot, um, this is a very valuable tool because we're able to see, you know, what's going on with each component and it can be very telltale signs of if there's a problem. Um, and, you know, we can go into a few examples of that later, but all that being said, it's, it's a really helpful tool to have an understanding of the overall system and what's happening. And so we, like I mentioned, we also have a mobile app in addition to the web-based portal. And it has the same exact functionality, a little bit different of a layout. Um, and so here's just a little brief video um, just showing that. And with the portal, you, just as an example, you can change your work mode. So whether you want uh, backup resilience or time of use or just self-use, um, you know, through the portal that can be changed. And this is just, you know, they're going through an example here of doing that in the, in the mobile app. And so again, just another thing that we found people really like to have the option of, um, if folks can just open their phone up, open an app and have visibility in what's happening with their system, um, we find that's pretty useful. So um, beyond that, we do have a lab in the U.S. Uh, specifically dedicated to Q-Home support. Um, it's in uh, Santa Clara, um, California. And at the lab, we work on certifications, um, warranties. We do product testing, um, like round trip efficiency, capacity, and performance, charging and discharging performance. Um, we have a grid simulator tool, which is very important because like I mentioned, uh, depending on where you are in the U.S., there are going to be different grid conditions. Um, the utility companies are going to have different uh, tariff rates and things like that. And so we want to make sure we can test those different situations. And we have a grid simulator to do just that. Um, and that's been very helpful for us when programming work modes, creating new work modes, um, and especially when working with these uh, utility company programs. Um, it's a great tool. We also do uh, compatibility testing. So um, the system can be AC coupled. And so that means there is gonna be some level of interaction with other, other hardware, other from different suppliers. And so we do compatibility testing to make sure that things are still operating as they should. Um, I already mentioned we do work mode testing. And of course we can do virtual product shows. We can do training as well at the lab. Uh, we have a uh, few systems plugged in and powered on. So it can be a really good way to do hands-on training uh, with, with installers. So here are just some examples of different Q-Home deployments. Um, and, you know, I think one of the things this really shows nicely is the modularity of the system um, and the flexibility of where it can be installed and how it can be installed. Um, you know, for example, in the image on the top right-hand side, you'll see that the batteries are on the other side of the door from the Q-Home inverter. And so if you just had one single unit, you know, you wouldn't have that luxury if that's what the homeowner wanted, for example. So again, the, the modularity of the Q-Home system uh, we think is, is, a, is a good feature of the product. So talking about just some kind of high level benefits then after all of that, um, 
and we touched on these already a little bit, but new installations, um, you can do completely DC coupled. If it's a retrofit application, you can do AC coupled. Um, if you want to add more solar, you can do AC coupled, right? Like it's a very flexible product in that sense. Um, and here's a key point, less manufacturers. And I talked about that a little bit earlier too, but we support the full product. And so if there's an issue with one of the parts, you don't have to chase any suppliers. You just come directly to us and, and we'll do everything we can to support you. Um, with the DC coupled system, there's going to just be one single inverter. You're not going to have the battery inverter and then a separate PV inverter. It's just all going to be in one box. And what that means is less interconnections, less wiring, and less potential points of failure. Um, and then in addition to that, the monitoring portal, right? Um, you have visibility into all the different components of the system, and it really helps to keep the information accurate and uh, usable, because again, it's all in one place. You don't have to look in one spot and then switch gears and go to another portal to find out what's happening. It's all under one roof. Um, and then this point is, is, is I think, critical. Um, the, the efficiency boost from DC-DC charging. Um, when you're doing DC to DC charging, the solar energy being generated isn't converted to AC and then back to DC to charge the battery. It's a DC coupled. And so you gain charging efficiency because of that. Um, as an example, it, you know, you can gain about 7% increased charging efficiency with a DC coupled solution. And so in the small example here, you know, it's 220 kilowatt hours per year that you're saving because of that efficiency. And now it's a 10 year product. And so potentially megawatts of energy can be saved just because of that conversion efficiency. Um, and so I think that's really important to, to note if you have the option, um, if it's a new installation or if there's not an existing PV inverter, the, there is a lot of value with the DC coupled solution. Less inverters and you get the boost of, of the charging efficiency. And this slide is just kind of going into a little bit more of, uh, you know, the benefits of having everything under one roof. Um, if, if you're using a system that has multiple suppliers and a part goes bad, um, you have to file for a warranty claim and you have to go through the RMA process for that, for that product. And when that happens, you're, you're going to have to work with the other suppliers as well, because maybe that was a part of the problem. And, um, it can be very time consuming. And, uh, we know that when a homeowner's power is having problems, they want solutions quickly. And so, you know, we saw that as an opportunity to make kind of an all-in-one solution with Q cells. So that if there is an issue, you know, we don't have to chase anybody around. Um, you just contact us and we can immediately start working on the solution instead of finding out, you know, which company needs to work on the solution. We take that on ourselves and we, and we start working on it immediately. And so that's the main slide, um, the main slide deck. And I know there were some questions that were sent over. Um, and just give me one second. So those questions are, were around AC and DC coupled, um, fastest movers among the Q-Home system, i.e. What, what, uh, what systems are being purchased the most, um, lessons learned from the field, our general installation process, um, advantages of Q-cells and plans for new products or updates. And so if it's okay with everyone, I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right into um, some lessons learned from the field. Um, we've definitely done some installations at this point and we've had some, some learning. And so this is kind of getting into the nitty gritty a little bit, but, you know, these reoccurringly come up. And so if people are looking to go install this product in the field and are mindful of these things, it can make the whole process a lot smoother. Um, and so when you're wiring the batteries to the inverter and to the BMS, there, there are a few things that commonly go wrong or are commonly forgotten. And again, if those are kept in mind when doing an installation, it can make the whole process go a lot smoother. So one of those items is what we call a series connected plug. If you have three battery modules in your system, for example, they're connected in series. And that means that last battery, it needs to be, you need to complete the circuit. And so there's a small short plug that's included with the system that needs to be put on that last battery. Um, and it, like I said, can be missed because it's a small piece. Um, but if you don't put that on there, the system, the batteries will not be able to power on. 
there's a, a data connection between the BMS and the inverter, and also between the different batteries and the BMS. And we found that, you know, sometimes folks want to make their own data cable. We do provide them, but sometimes folks want to make their own. And that connection, it, it has to be strong and it has to be it has a solid connection because otherwise it can cause communication issues with the BMS. So all that being said, you know, one key takeaway that we've learned so far is when uh, installing the batteries and, and configuring it with the BMS and the inverter to make sure that that short connection is there and just to make sure that the data connection between everything is, is working because um, we, we had reoccurring questions about that. Beyond that, on the battery unit, and this seems a little straightforward, but it, again, it's one of those small details that, that can be forgotten. Um, on the battery module, there's a breaker, there's a button, and there's a dip switch. And so, of course, the breaker has to be on and the switch has to, and the, and the switch has to be pressed for the system to power on. And so we always reiterate and reiterate for folks to check that. Um, the last item is the DIP switch. Um, which has, you know, is, it goes from zero to seven. And this switch needs to be set according to the number of batteries that you have in your system. Um, so if you have one battery, it's set to zero. If you have two batteries, it's set to one. And if you have three batteries, it's set to two. If this dip switch is not set, then it will throw a BMS error. And so, um, again, just one of those small things that we get a lot of questions about, and it's a very easy fix. Um, just hop, I hop on the phone with an installer and ask them to check these things, and then we find that it's not what it should, and it turns the system on. So um, it's important to do, but it's an easy fix if it's not done. The next kind of area where we have a lot of questions and um, you know we're working with quite a few installers to work on is wiring the CT and the meter. And so if you remember in the portal, we have visibility on what power is coming to and from the grid. That's possible because we have CT sensors that are put onto those lines and that runs to a receiver in the, in the inverter. Um, now, if those CT sensors are put in the wrong orientation, um, the system will still power on, it will still work. Um, but in the portal, it will look as if, you know, instead of pulling power from the grid, it'll say you're putting power into the grid and vice versa. And so it's really important to get the orientation of the CT sensors correct. Um, because like I said, if the orientation is incorrect, then it can, it can mess up the reading from the grid essentially. And it can cause some issues with the inverter performance. Um, but again, you know, it's, it's something that we've seen, but it's an easy fix. Um, all we have to do is switch the orientation of the sensors in most cases. So an important thing to note, but it's another easy fix. Um, and then there's a small comment here about wiring the, uh, um, the CT meter to the inverter. Um, and so just making sure that you get your wiring right is again, another important thing to note with the CT sensors. And so, you know, those are the big takeaways, the big kind of, the biggest reoccurring troubleshooting support that we do. Number one is the wiring of the battery and the BMS to the inverter checking the short connected plug, checking the data connection, checking the dip switch on the BMS, making sure the breakers are turned on the bat and the, and, the, and the button is turned on. And then lastly, making sure the CT sensors are put on correctly. Um, you know, I'd say the majority of inquiries we've gotten right now fall into those two areas. And the challenge is, you know, while this is the root cause in most cases, it's not always obvious, right? Whenever there's a problem, um, you know, sometimes it'll just say BMS error, right? And we have to go through the steps, look at the portal, be on the phone with the installer to, to kind of identify this as being the problem. And more often than not, it, it's the issue. Um, and so those are, those are the big takeaways uh, that we've had from the field so far. Um, in terms of our installation process, um, I don't wanna like go through the full installation manual, of course, um, but, since we've been working with people, we've kind of started to create a pre-installation checklist and a post-installation checklist just for best practices, things to think about and to check before you know you go to install the system and then after you install the system. Um, so, and I'm just gonna kind of go line by line. Um, we have created an ESS resources document and 
we share this with every installer that that buys the product. And this document is a it's a live document, and so if you click the link, for example, it'll take you to that that separate document. Um, and so we really want to make sure that that's received and that it's looked at because it has pretty much all information that you'll need to install, uh, commission, and operate the system. Of course, we're here to support, but that document is is very very valuable. Um, there's an installation video as well that we have, and again. It's something that's really, really helpful to watch, to get your head around how to install the system, things to look out for, um, and so on and so forth. When you're, when you're sizing your backup panel and determining what critical loads uh, to include or not to include, um, we're more than happy to, to work with you know, the client on that. So um, we have a load calculator tool. We review single line diagrams. Um, just to make sure that things are being sized properly. So we're more than happy to support on that end. Um, the next one is checking your PV inputs, um, making sure that you don't exceed the maximum amount. Again, you can do the DCAC ratio of 1.2, of course, um, but if you go any higher than that, it, it can, uh, it'll exceed what's allowed. Um, and then of course, if you don't put enough on the string, then it won't power on uh, that particular string. So it's really important to check that. And then um, I mentioned earlier, if you're doing an AC couple of application and you're putting your, your separate PV inverter onto your backup panel, you're going to be limited by the nameplate capacity of your Q-home inverter. And so that's what's mentioned here. Um, if you have a 7.6 kW Q-home inverter, then you can only put a maximum of 7.6 kW AC um, on the backup panel. And so we just have an example here. If you're using in-phase, for example, um, it'd be 30 of the IQ7 units or 25 of the IQ7 plus units. Um, the next item is this, in this play, this question is about, you know, how do you want to install the system? Where can you put it? Where does the homeowner want it? Um, is checking if the standard battery cable that we provide is gonna be sufficient. So in the image I shared earlier, you saw that they put the batteries on the whole other side um, of the door from the inverter. And so in that case, they had to fashion their own cables. And so definitely double check that uh, before going to do the installation. And um, of course the batteries have to be wired together. And we really, really suggest leaving a comfortable 12 inches in between batteries to, to make that wiring much easier. Um, Cause you do have to kind of get your hands in there and, and, and screw some things in. So um, we really strongly suggest being mindful of that separation. Um, and then, of course, just making sure the breakers for your main panel and your backup panel are sized correctly, um, as is the case with installing any, any electrical device. And so that's the pre-installation checklist um, and just, you know, some best practices, if you will. And then we have the post-installation checklist. Um, and uh, I can just kind of quickly blow through some of these. I won't go over every single one of them. Um, like I mentioned before, we're here to support on the backup panel sizing and determining which loads that you want to connect to it. And so making sure that your loads are distributed on the backup panel between L1 and L2, making sure that any high surge loads are, are engineered into the system essentially. Um, double check your meter connections because like I mentioned, that's, it can be easy to mess up because the orientation, if it's wrong, it can cause a few errors. It can cause the portal to be, to be displaying incorrect information. And so always check the meter connection. Um, make sure there are no alarms or displays. Um, make sure that the portal is activated, that everything is connected, that the data is being transferred from the system to the portal. Um, because the system can be AC or DC coupled, um, you have to make sure that it's set to the right mode because you can set it to AC coupled and you can set it to DC coupled. And so you wanna make sure that it's set to the, um, to the right mode. Um, of course, when you're determining what work mode to put the system in, you have to have an understanding of the local utility um, and you have to have an understanding of what the homeowner wants. Um, with those two things, you know, we'll work with you to basically program the inverter to, to fit that application. Um, and uh, that, those are pretty much the high level things. Um, there's a warranty registration card. We obviously recommend filling that out um, as soon as you get the system up and installed. And um, if there are any questions or any RMAs or anything like that, like I mentioned before, you just reach out to, to QSOs 
and then we'll be on the phone to help support you on, on the installation. Um, and I did wanna briefly just mention the uh, installer training program that we have. Um, we do have a dedicated uh, page for that with uh, video content and, and various questions. Um, and this is not required to install the system, but we do strongly recommend going through this because as you can, as you've heard, you know, there are a lot of small details that when they're missed, it's an easy fix, but oftentimes it require, you know, somebody to go back to the site. It will mean the homeowner might have issues with their backup panel. And all of that could be avoided, you know, by going through the training, for example, by getting the CT sensors right, by getting that short connector on the battery. Um, and so while it's not required to install the system, we highly recommend having it. And then that's, that does it. Um, like I said, I just wanted to kind of go through uh, a little bit of a response to the questions that were sent over before um, before the webinar, but that does it for me. Um, I think now, and correct me if I'm wrong, team, but we can go through some questions. Yeah, um, I'll actually, yeah, I'll actually before we um, jump into that, I'm going to go ahead and just say a couple of things about the carport um, option that we have for the slides, and then we can... Okay jump in and start. I know we've got a bunch of questions in the Q&A and in the chat we can start looking at. Um, so uh, thank you, Silas. And let me just jump in here and mm -hmm. um, hit a few points about uh, Blicker. Sounds good. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, Blicker is a uh, residential carport system um, that we started carrying uh, designed for um, two cars. Uh, We'll jump into uh, some of the specs on it. Um, it's made uh, and designed here in the USA and, and Texas. Comes with a standard 25 year warranty. Um, very sturdy designs made out of galvanized steel with a marine grade paint so it can be used in, in um, a lot of areas where maybe you have a lot of moisture or um, uh, salt content in the air um, and it should stand up to uh, the elements. Um, super easy installation. Um, it comes in a, a few different components um, broken up and then you'll, you'll use uh, the installation manual to just uh, set it up where you're not using any uh, large equipment. You're just digging holes uh, that are two feet deep, putting in your uprights and then connecting in the uh, structures uh, for the upper portion. Um, so very light on the tools. Um, you don't need any heavy equipment or machinery for moving or for, for installing the piers. Um, it's also very versatile. Um, it comes uh, in a standard uh, 18 by 18 by nine foot configuration, but um, can be designed to have multiple piers to fit um, uh, larger um, uh, designs if need be. Um, uh, we have uh, kits put together that are designed around a, a 24 of a 60 or 120 cell panel, but can also be used with 72 cell, um, 96 cell, basically anything, as long as it fits within that framework on, on the top. Um, uh, comes with a standard five degree tilt um, and 35 PSF and I believe 135 um, MPH wind load, uh, but can be brought up to 65 PSF for um, snow load and uh, 170 for wind for certain areas and situations. Um, it comes uh, with a few other, uh, it doesn't come, but you can add on a few other accessories to make it a little bit uh, more customized. Um, so there's solar powered lighting that you can put in. Um, there's this silicone tea gasket for water sealing the top so that you can have a fully water sealed um, uh, roof. There's a, this decorative mesh uh, sail that we have that goes underneath to sort of hide and, and make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing the, the backside of the modules and the, the cabling. Um, and we have it set up so you can integrate an EV charger into the piers and have all the cabling run through there along with the, the uh, cabling for the PV system and inverters. Um, uh, it comes in kits as well, which I didn't mention, so you can purchase it just as a standalone uh, unit or with the inverters, modules, EV chargers, any of the accessories, um, and we have those kitted out in, in uh, different versions on our website. Um, for our installer customers, uh, we have a, a authorized installer program, very simple, 
you submit an application, you do three installations. Um, after you're finished with those three installations, you'll sign the special price agreement, and then you'll immediately get a $1,000 uh, rebate um, for those first three installations. Um, the standard uh, setup right now is five installations per month, and then you'll get $1,000 back per installation. Um, although if you, as you're building your, your pipeline of these projects, um, we are open to putting together specialized uh, um, agreements where maybe it's one, two, three units in, in per month or whatever fits your, your specific need. Um, you can design these systems through our solar kit guide along with any of the other uh, systems you might be doing, grid tied, off grid, um, partial systems where maybe you only need panels or racking uh, or inverters. Um, you can go through and choose all those options as uh, uh, standalone components. Um, you can see here, as it's going through, it's populating the items uh, for your bill of materials on the left there. Um, and you have a lot of options for filtering through and choosing you know, different uh, structures that you're going to be mounting them on, different racking brands, um, different roof interfaces. And as you're doing that and, and choosing your different layouts, it again is updating uh, that entire price or that entire uh, bill of material on the left there. So you can see real time what it's going to be doing um, to the, the system. Um, if you're logged into your account as well, you'll also see your specialized pricing there. So you can start playing around with options as, as far as what's going to affect the cost of the, the system. Um, uh, once you once you get through um, choosing the different options, um, it'll wind up sending you a quote uh, and, and populating a, a project inside your um, project section on your, your account. Um, so very, very useful, as you can see, very quick. Um, we're almost through now. We're getting to the point where we're, we're choosing the, the battery storage system. We've got the Q cells. Um, very uh, simple, very easy to generate a full bill of materials for a, for a project um, with all the different options that we have on our website. Um, so again, very, very simple. Um, okay, so that's all, all I had to, to say there. Um, we'll go ahead and, and start jumping into the questions um, that that I know we've got a bunch of. Um, so let's take a look. Sounds good. It looks like the first question I'm seeing is if you have a PLC, why would you need a receiver? Um, and so, yeah, so that's related to the rapid shutdown. And so um, on the earliest versions of the Q-Home product, the receiver uh, is not integrated into the device, but on the newest versions that are being sent out now, it is integrated. And so um, if it's a situation where we're using one of those earlier units, then we'll work with the installer that has it to basically make that happen. Um, but to answer your question, uh, nowadays it is integrated into the unit. So you're correct in saying you don't, you don't, you don't need an external receiver in that, in that situation. Um, next question is, what happens if the AC coupled inverter is producing more power than the backup panel needs when operating in standalone mode? Very good question. Um, so in standalone mode, when the grid is off, um, the Q home inverter is actually generating the artificial grid signal to the backup panel. And if like you're saying, the AC coupled inverter is producing more than is needed, um, the Q home can actually derate the inverter to reduce its output. Um, by controlling the grid signal. Um, I won't go into too much more detail on that one because it does get pretty technical pretty quick. But um, like I said, it basically controls the grid signal to, uh, to reduce that AC output um, in the scenario that is producing more than is needed. So that's a very good question. Voltage and current windows on the MPPT inputs. Um, so the... The, the voltage window is a uh, maximum of 600 DC volts um, on any channel, uh, minimum of uh, 105. Um, and then the current is uh, 10 amps at NPPT and then 12.5 amps at short circuit. Um, and then the startup system voltage is 150 volts for the DC coupled. The hybrid inverter does have uh, AC and DC disconnects um, on the system. 
the DC and AC, the efficiencies uh, between the DC and AC coupled scenarios, um, like I mentioned on that previous slide, is is it's application dependent, of course. Um, but you know we've seen seven percent as a common number. With you basically have seven percent better efficiency with your charging of your batteries in a DC coupled scenario. Do the batteries have thermal runaway fire protection? Um, yes, yes, they do. Um, the operating temperature range of the batteries is 32 to 100, 113 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, if that's exceeded, uh, the BMS will power down the batteries to protect them essentially. Um, and then it'll keep tabs on the temperature so that when the temperature drops back down, it will re-energize re the battery system. And then, all right, I think that was all the questions um, that I'm actually, seeing here. There's a, in the Q&A section, there's actually a handful of, uh, of questions as well, which um, if you can't see that, I can go ahead and start reading them out as well. Yeah, so, that sounds good. Let's do that. Yeah. So the first one we've got in there is surge current capacity is critical to those with well or heat pumps. What's the max surge and duration during battery backup? Um, sure. So the kilowatt peak, or excuse me, so 32 amps is the, is the backup uh, maximum discharge rate. Um, and that's continuous. So 32 amps continues. Great, cool. And then um, next question uh, also from Eric was, what level of diag diagnostics are offered? Um, what inverter health diagnostics, pre PV string or individual panel characteristics? So if, so that's kind of, it's a question on the functionality of the, of the portal, I suppose, right? Like what information can be accessed and investigated through the portal? Um, and so if, if you remember in the portal, it kind of gives that overall view of the different system components, right? And you can actually drill down even further to look at the raw data for those different points in the system. Um, and so, you know, if you really want to troubleshoot a battery or you really want to understand what's been going on with it, you can access that raw data essentially uh, via the portal. Um, and then in terms of the PV string, um, if it's a DC coupled, uh, if it's a DC coupled system, you, you know, you're going to have the string level information on your PV panels, um, again, that you can view in the portal. Um, but if it's an AC coupled system, you know, you won't have that visibility. Gotcha. And then, uh, just to tack onto that, there was also, um, uh, in the monitoring portal, can you uh, choose different uh, time intervals for for downloading data, a day, a week, longer periods? Um, I'm not exactly sure about that. I'll have to look at that and, and, and get back to y'all. But um, in terms of the like the data being delivered from the system, it's delivered every five minutes to the portal. Um, and so, you know, every five minutes, the data will be refreshed. But in terms of um, what data can actually be pulled down in its interval, you know, five minutes would be the base. Um, and you may have to just kind of analyze from there. If, you know, if you want to do a full day analysis, you pull down the five minute intervals from a full day and, and then kind of summarize it that way, I suppose. Gotcha. And I'll, I, I don't think I said this at the beginning, but if we don't get it at, to any questions, we do have um, a list of, of these and we can, can reach out to you afterwards as well, or if we don't have a specific answer um, right away. Um, uh, jumping to the next one, Robert was asking about qualification for the National Grid Connected Solutions Program and if that's expected for QCELs. Uh, yes. And so this is one I, I would want to send a you know, follow up with to give more complete information, but we are working on that, yes. Um, and that, that falls into um, the demand mode that we had talked about where, you know, it's a specific program with the utility that requires some kind of interaction between the system and the, and the grid. Um, and so that's, we are working on that, yes. But what exactly is the status of it is what I'll have to get back to you on. Okay, great. Um, and the next question we've got is uh, about how the lithium-ion batteries fare at lower temperatures in the Northeast. Um, so, like I mentioned, our, we have the operational temperature range in the, you know, in the technical specifications of 32 to 113. Um, and so, if it does dip below that, the 
batteries can de-energize to be protected by the BMS. Um, and then beyond that, we haven't, you know, we haven't seen any performance issues or things like that with the system. And I guess the, the second part of that question that they had on there is that with next year's revision of NAC requiring batteries being located outside, is there anything, I guess, specific to that that would um, help to uh, expand out that temperature range or, or just sort of mitigate it in, in areas where temperatures regularly get below freezing? Um, at this point, I, I'm not sure of any plans to expand the operational temperature range, but um, that is a really good question. And so I, I would definitely want to take that one down and, and get back with our team and get an answer to you, Eric. Thank you for that question. That's a really good one. Cool. Um, and then jump into um, next questions. I, there's a the, sort of a broader question about that Peter asked about um, NMC versus LFP and, and why one over the other. So I, I don't have the best answer for that. Um, it would, that, that would kind of fall to our, our product development team. Um, but at least my understanding is that, you know, uh, lithium iron phosphate is, there are some companies using it out there, but the vast majority of folks creating battery systems nowadays are using NMC. Um, that might change in the next couple of years to LFB, but um, it's hard to say. So I, I, I don't really have a good answer for that one, unfortunately. No worries. Um, and then um, stacking inverters and systems. Um, you could maybe that's another Peter question about, I guess, what the capabilities there are. If say you want to. Right. Right. And so this is another really good question. Um, so if you want to, so let's say you have an 8.6 kW inverter and 18.9 kWh uh, storage capacity, you know, you've maxed it out. If you want to add more, um, you will need kind of a, a standalone system in addition to that one. Um, ideally, you're going to have an entirely separate backup panel as well. Um, and so to answer your question, to stack, to quote unquote, stack the inverters, um, you know, we do strongly recommend having an entirely separate backup panel for that separate system. And uh, understand that's not ideal, but, um, you know, that, that's what, where it's at right now. Um, if you connect it, you know, if you connect both inverters to a single backup panel, uh, theoretically it can work, but there will be some issues, right? So we really don't recommend doing that. Um, but uh, for the time being, if you want to stack inverters, it is possible. Um, but we really recommend having two separate backup panels at this time. Great. Um, uh... Then someone is talking, I guess, a little bit more about uh, how would the end user select different use cases? So if they wanted to change um, from time of use to backup to the different things, is it done at the inverter itself or is it uh, can it be done through the, the app? Sure. So you have uh, three different options, really. Um, on, you can do it on the inverter. You can do it on the, the web portal and you can do it on the mobile app. Um, and how, so the answer is, yeah, you can change it on, on any one of those. Um, only comment would be, you know, if the homeowner wants to do that, I would recommend, you know, working with the installer or giving us a call and working with us to do that um, just to make sure that it's done properly because it is a little bit more on the technical side. Um, and, you know, if you're setting, for example, time of use mode, um, you know, it can take a little bit of investigation to determine what the best charge and discharge windows are um, so like I said, definitely doable, but, um, if it's going to be done, we'd recommend working closely with the installer or giving us a call to, to walk you through it. Great. And I guess that kind of segues into the next question we have, which is, um, will Q-cells work if someone's, uh, with a homeowner or, or someone who's doing a DIY installation, um, will warranty claims and, and technical support, uh, work directly, um, or do you require an installer or the distributor who, who the customer is working with to act as an intermediator? Um, you know, I have not encountered that situation yet, to be honest, um, and I would have to just kind of double check with our team to see exactly what the best response is there, you know. But that being said, if it's a situation where the Q-Home is installed and the person's on-site troubleshooting it, you know, give us a call and we will support. Um, you know, getting into the nitty-gritty of the warranty and things like that, I'm not entirely sure. I would want to double check with our team before giving a final answer. Um, 
But if it's a system out in the field that's being installed and support is needed, then, you know, you still just give us a call and we'll, we'll be able to support you on, on that installation or commissioning. Uh, Great. Yeah, like I said, I would want to get kind of a more complete answer to that one before I definitely. say anything for sure. Yeah, and we can, like I, like I was saying earlier, we can definitely follow up with, uh, with anybody whose questions we don't get to or have a full answer for. Uh, before the end here. And I'll probably, we'll maybe do two more questions just so we don't go too much past time. Um, so the, the next question on here was, um, do the batteries have blackout startup capability? So I guess if, if, you're, if you've completely, the solar's down, grid's down, batteries are, are, I guess not the solar, but if the batteries are completely drained and the grid's mm -hmm. down, will they be able to kick off just from the solar and, and start recharging? Mm -hmm. Yep. So another really good question. And yes, um, the, the batteries do have blackout startup capability. And, you know, the way it works essentially is um, in the system, you can specify what the minimum state of charge will be for your system. Um, of course, there's a, there's, a, there's a level at which you cannot go below for safety reasons, um, but you can set that value. And so in a situation where it's you know, cloudy and it's raining outside and you just charged your Tesla the day before and your battery's completely dead. Um, there is still a nominal amount of power in the battery to power the system on. Um, and uh, basically that power keeps the communication board inside the inverter powered on, which is the brain of the system essentially. Um, and, and it keeps tabs on what's happening so that, you know, once the PV comes back on or the grid fires back up, then, you know, it can reactivate and re-energize the system. Um, so to answer your question, yes. Yes, it can work from Black Start. Great. And then uh, last one we'll go ahead and hit uh, before we wrap things up is, um, is there a way of integrating vehicle to home inverters to provide, uh, I guess, a, an extra, um, uh, you know, battery storage capacity through someone's EV? So not right now. There's not like a dedicated mode or, or kind of application for that. Um, but I, I think that's a really good question still. Um, I think it's an interesting question for sure. So I will, I'll take that one up with our team and I'll, I'll send you an email about that as well. See if, you know, maybe we have plans to develop that or include it in the product. But really good question. I, thank you for that. Um, let me take it down. Excellent. Um, well, we're, we're pushing past time now, so I think we'll, we'll probably go ahead and wrap things up here. Um, any questions we didn't get to, we'll go back through, and uh, anyone that uh, we didn't have a full answer for, we'll definitely follow back up um, and try and um, answer it more fully. Um, if you have questions uh, afterwards, you can feel free to uh, reach out to us at info at rengu.com, and we can uh, try to answer them. Um, or if we need to um, involve Silas or someone else at, at QCells, you know, we can definitely do that as well. I um, want to thank you, Silas, for coming in and, and giving a great presentation, and um, we appreciate it. And, yeah. Yeah, no, it was a pleasure being here, and thank you for the, for the invite, Nick, and, and Renbu team. It was a real pleasure being here. Looking forward to working with you all more. Excellent. Cool. Well, thanks, everyone, for joining, and uh, we hope you come back and join us for our next webinar. Thanks. Bye.